Okay, one way of solving quadratics is by completing the square. And we're going to use here the incredible Lautet three circle method. The first step is to take any number that doesn't have an X in it onto the other side, remembering to change its sign as it crosses the border. Now, to change the square, uh, to complete the square, what we're going to do is we're going to add on something to this side and add on the identical thing to the other side. So we're merely going to add the same thing onto both sides. Here's how it works. The square root of x squared is x, so I'm going to put that in a circle. I'm going to circle this sign. Then I'm going to take half of the number 6 and circle that. So, I'm taking half of that number sets and circling it. Now what I'm going to do is take 3 and square it. And fill in those two blanks with 3 squared. So that's 9 here and 9 there. The left hand side has 3 turns. And what you'd like to do is get it so that instead of the letter X appearing twice, the letter X only appears once. Well, you can do it now. Merely take the three things in the circle and the whole left-hand side can all be changed to that. So the letter X only appears once. The right-hand side, I have 7 and 9 is 16. Now I can solve my equation fairly nicely. Take the square root of the left hand side and take the square root of the right hand side. Okay, the square root of that and the square root of that ends up giving us this. And please remember we end up having two answers plus four or negative four. Okay. Now we can finish off our equation fairly easily just by taking 3 across the border and remember we're going to get two answers. So x will equal plus 4 minus 3 or minus 4 minus 3. So x will equal 1 or negative 7. Okay? So uh, I'm going to give you four examples of this. If I was given a question very similar to this, um, but let's pretend I had a negative 2 here instead, everything works out the same way. I'm going to do plus blank here, plus blank here. Square root of x squared is x. Circle that. Half of the 6 is 3. Square it on both sides, I, so I get 9. The left hand side, I can now write with the letter X only appearing once. The right hand side works out to 11. When I take the square root of both sides, here it doesn't work out to a perfect square. So I write my answer as plus or minus root 11. Now when I take the 3 to the other side, here are my two answers. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 11. So I get one answer by adding the square root of 11, the other answer by subtracting the square root of 11. Okay, completing the square again. This time I have a 2 um, that's in front of the x squared that doesn't go into everything. So I'm going to do it similar to the other method. I take the plus 7 to the other side, but here I'm going to factor that 2 out. Two, into, 2 x squared is x squared, 2 into the 12 x is 6 x. Okay. Now, I'm going to put in my plus blank here and my plus blank 
here. Now this blank you'll notice is multiplied by 2. So right away I'm going to go over and multiply 2 by that blank. That's the biggest error you'll make if you forget to do that. Now let's go through with my completing the square. Square root of that is x. Circle that half a sit, so again we're at 3 here. Square the 3, and you're putting a 9 in here, and you're putting a 9 over there. The left hand side, we can get the letter X appearing only once by taking the three things that are in the circle and using the incredible Lotet three circle method. That just simplifies to that. The right hand side, we end up with negative 7 plus 18, which equals 9. No, I lied, it equals 11. Now, before we take the square root, Let's divide both sides by 2. So I've isolated the power. I have x plus 3 squared is 11 over 2. Now what I'll do is take the square root of both sides. And x plus 3 will magically be by itself. And I'll have plus or minus the square root of 11.2 which is 5.5 .5 on the right hand side. Take the 3 across and there are my two answers. One I would get by adding the square root of 5.5 .5, and the other by subtracting the square root of 5.5. .5. Okay, so if you have a number in front, first of all see if it goes into everything. If it does, divide everything by 2. If it doesn't, just divide the 2 into the first two terms and complete the square. But the big mistake is whatever is multiplied by this bracket is the number in front. You've got to multiply this bar, this blank over here, by that same number. I get into the habit of putting it down there first of all before I do my three circle method here. Okay, for this question I'm going to use the completing the square method and it will bring up two things. First thing, as before, I take the 8 to the other side, it will become minus 8. I have an x squared minus a 5 x here. And I'm going to put a plus blank on this side and a plus blank on that side. Now when I go to use my three circle method, the square root of x squared is x. I circle the minus sign. Now I have to take half of 5. Well, because it's an odd number, I'm going to write it that way as 5 over 2. You'll find it's a lot easier to write it that way as 5 over 2 than as 2.5. Squaring both, I get 25 over 4 there, 25 over 4 here. Now the left hand side can very nicely be put in one bracket and the two x's now only appear as one x. You take the three things in the circle and fill in the bracket like that. That goes there, that goes there, that goes there. Now the right hand side you have a fraction and what I usually do is I say to myself self that's negative 8 over 1, and this is over 4. So I'm going to change 8 over 1 to negative 32 over 4. Now I have both brackets at the same denominator, or sorry, both fractions at the same denominator. Simplifying, I get negative 7 over 4. Now if I take the square root of this side, I should take the square root of that side. And this gives me the square root of a negative number. Okay, so in this case I say x, there is no answer. Okay, 
Now I'm going to change the question just slightly here. What if that had been a negative 8? So when I brought it to this side, it would be positive 8.1, 8 over 1. And then when I added on the fraction, it would be 25 over 4. So that would make it 32 and 25, both over 4. And that would have made it uh, 57 over 4. Okay. My question at this time, if I took the square root of that, would be x minus 5 over 2 equals the square root of 57 plus or negative over the square root of 4, which is 2. Now when I bring my minus 5 across there, I make it plus 5. I have the plus or minus the square root of 57. And you'll notice they both have the same denominator of 2. Okay, so it works out fairly nicely um, if you have an odd number here. Write it as a 5 over 2. Square it, it's going to be something over 4. On the right hand side, make both numbers the same denominator. So that's the only time you're really bothered by a fraction. When you simplify it, you'll either get a negative number which has no square root, so there's no answer to the question. Or you'll have a positive number, and it'll be something over 4, so that when you take the square root of it, that bottom will always be 2. This will always be 2, so when you bring it across, both of them are always going to be over 2. Okay, so there is no real big problem if this is an odd number. It just takes a tiny little bit more working, that's all.